Why are people doubting still that there's man-made climate change? Well, there are lots of reasons, of course, but uh, the obvious reason is that people don't know enough to know whether they should doubt it or not. And why don't they don't, don't know enough? Because they don't listen to the right people or they don't study the evidence at all. But they uh, look to newspapers or internet or whatever to get the answers. And um, they get very varied answers from people, again, who know nothing and people with vested interests. And they're very powerful people with vested interests who are very keen not to go away from fossil fuels like coal and oil and gas because they get such a lot of money from them. Well, there are lots of things that everybody can do. It depends who you are, of course. If you're an ordinary person, you can become much more efficient in your use of energy. You can do things like buy an electric car instead of using, using petrol. You could uh, cut down uh, various ways in which you, you create, you use fossil fuels and so on. You can make your home much more efficient. Lots of things that individual people can do. But then they also need to get governments to come in and do their thing because governments are the only people who can really set up a system whereby the whole energy system changes from one which is based on coal and oil and gas to one which is based on renewables. And that really needs a lot of political pressure and power as well. So they should be supporting those political actions, not listening to the vested interests from people who are trying to destroy it. Should we not invest more in renewable energy? The answer to that is yes, um, but that means who is going to do the investment and of course we need help in investing in these things, which means we have to persuade the governments or the industries or whoever they are to do it too. And um, the reason we should be doing it is because we've got to cut our fossil fuel use, our to stop carbon and getting into the atmosphere to spoil the climate. But also, um, there are other reasons for doing it too, because it will save money in the long run. It will save pollution, there's an awful lot of pollution from, from conventional energy sources. And, and many of them are very insecure, and we get more security from getting our energy from elsewhere too. So there are lots of very good reasons for doing it, and it won't cost us very much. In fact, in the long run, it will cost us less than nothing. Government, our government's taking proper measures to combat global warming. They're uh, doing something, many governments are doing something, but are they doing enough? The answer is no, because we have to do a lot more in order to change at the rate we need to change. And it's very urgent to do that uh, because of the damage that's going to come from global warming, damage in terms of, you know, um, in terms of heat waves, in terms of storms, in terms of floods, in terms of droughts, in terms of all sorts of problems we don't want. So we've got to do something about it. And, um, and so government and people and industries have to get together. And I've often, I've talked to industries sometimes about it and also banks, because banks have lots of money to invest, but they will only invest if governments provide um, a framework whereby it's going to work and it's, they've got confidence for the future in what they do for big projects. So governments have to come in and give them that confidence by providing a framework. And I, it seems to a naive person like me that if only governments and industry could sit around the table for an afternoon, they could sort it out. Mm -hmm. And why they don't, I don't know. Well, I do, uh, is Spain contributing enough? I don't know a lot about what happens in Spain, but I do know that Spain has done a lot in terms of so the sorts of renewable energy, in particular solar energy, um, making, uh, getting solar energy both from the photovoltaic energy and also from um, boiling water and creating steam engines and so on by doing it that way. And, it's, uh, and, and there's some very good places, big, big projects in Spain just have done that. So, uh, there has been quite a lot done in Spain, but I'm told they're rather doing rather, rather little now, and that's a pity because they should get on with it, because it, it, there's a real future in it. What do I think about the IEC and the Canary Islands and the observatories? Well, it's a wonderful part of the world, it's a very beautiful part of the world. Uh, 20 years ago we came for holidays here several times and enjoyed them very much, and I've 
It's been lovely to come back and to, and in particular, of course, to see TCU or observatories, the way those have grown. And you've got some of the very best astronomical observatories in the world doing work right at the frontier of uh, what you've been able to do. And that's, uh, that's very exciting. I was very excited for, for the people who were telling me about it uh, and the enthusiasm which which they're uh, trying to solve the problems of the cosmos. Um, on these little islands of La Palma, which is uh, a wonderful thing to try to do. So I think it's a great place and uh, I wish you very well in all of that. And the IAC is, uh, must be one of the best of its kind in the world. And you've, the enthusiasm of people here and the way they work together and the way they um, do things for other people too and work, work with others around the world is also very, possibly very rewarding.